Hey guys, Sierra from Crafting Unedited here, and today we're going to talk about cutting some chipboard to create something as awesome as, if I can get it off my wall, this. So these are just like those little signs that you can hang up on a wall or a door. Some people use them as a wreath. Um, but I do suggest if you're going to use them outside, you seal them with some sort of outside sealer. Um, that is just a draft project. Project. I'm not finished with it yet, but that's, that's basically what we're going to cut today. Um, but with a little bit more of a different design. Um, that was for my daughter. I'm going to make one for my son today. So um, first thing you want to do is have a design that either you create or that you find. If you are having trouble designing one, um, I will do a video on how to create one like that <laughs> um, because all that Cricut gave me uh, for design space was the embellishment which is the outside border of that um, sign. <laughs> I forgot what it was called there for a second. So I created this one for my son and I'm going to take this off here to show you what it looks like. So. The outside borders of this one were just some, it was an embellishment, but it was just this corner. So what I did was I copied and pasted it all the way around to create a full border. And then I found a font that I liked and I attached his name and I welded it. So this will be easier to explain during a separate video, which I will do for you guys, don't worry. But for today, I'm just going to show you how to make it. So you go to make it once you've got your design done and you're ready to go. You hit continue and the settings that you want for your chip board. I found this on Amazon and it's pretty fabulous, not going to lie. Um, it works really well and what you want to do is as soon as you get it, you want to open it up so that it can acclimate to your climate. It is different for everyone and uh, you don't want it to be too humid or too cool that way because then it'll work. You can see it's not warped. We're good. Solid. So the settings that you want for your Cricut Maker. You can only do this on the Maker because you have to use the knife blade and the knife blade is not compatible with the Explore Air. Not compatible with the Explore Air. <laughs> so the settings that you want to use, it's called Damask Chip Board. Sounds kind of like slang or jargon, <laughs> but it's Damask Chipboard. So you're going to go ahead and select that one. I have that on my favorites, so I don't have to scroll through or anything. But if you don't have it saved in your favorites, it is not on the popular items list. So you're going to go to the search bar and find it in there. Again, it's Damask Chipboard, not the mask chipboard, da mask, D-A. <laughs> All right, so I've got that set for my design space. You're going to want a strong grip mat. Yes, I'm using a non cricket mat. Don't judge me. <laughs> and you're going to want to use some painter's tape. I have this pink painter's tape. But I don't know what I did with it. I'll find that in a second. But um, painter's tape, because it does come off of the mat easily and it does not remove any of the adhesive from your mat, which is very valuable. Um, so you're going to want to make sure that you use the strong grip mat, painter's tape, and you want to use the painter's tape all around all four edges. All right, so I'm going to finish that. Ah. Painter's tape. You can use whatever color painter's tape you can find. Um, I just found this. I have no idea where we got it from. <laughs> but you can use that blue stuff or the green stuff or the yellow stuff, whatever you want, honestly. It all works the same. But you definitely want to use painter's tape or something similar and you don't have to go very far into the edges just enough for it to grip and all four sides you want all four sides of it to be secured this prevents it from shifting all over the place and ruining your cut trust me you don't want to ruin this cut because Another helpful tent, hint, <laughs> hint, not tent. You want to make sure that you allow plenty of time for this because it does require 12, yes, 12 passes. So it took for that one about two hours 
don't worry, we're not going to watch two hours of this video. I don't know what I would talk to you about for two hours. Um, but I am going to show you what it looks like start to finish. All right, so we've got all four edges. This one I see taking a little bit longer than the other one did because it has all those like little tiny grooves in the center. So this one I am counting on about... Hmm, I will call it two and a half, three hours. That's what we're going to say. So you want to allot yourself that amount of time without your machine. Can I do it? Can I go three hours without my Cricut on a Sunday? <laughs> we will see. All right, so while I'm finishing this up, if you guys want to see more of my crafting videos, tutorials, how-tos, just for funs, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can see um, more of me and more of my fun tutorials in Cricut crafting. I'm just trying to get some of this off because I'm afraid that it's going to catch on um, the roller. It's not coming off very well though. So yeah, hit that subscribe button so that you can see more of me because I'd love to see more of you. And just going to throw this out there, there might be some goodies for the more subscribers I get. The more the merrier. All right, almost there. Try not to cut my mat here. <laughs> there we go. All right, so you can see it has been secured on all four sides. Perfect. All right, so now you're gonna go ahead, load it into your mat. Again, make sure that you've got your knife blade in your machine and that you have your settings set to design space. Once you've loaded, once you've got it loaded, you want to make sure that you take these grippy things, the rollers, not the rollers, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> they are star wheels, that's what they're called. You want to make sure that the star wheels are all the way over, as far over to the right as you can push them. That way they don't make any like indentions into your board. That wouldn't be very fun. I have forgotten to do this on many of things, including fabric and leather and things like that, and it doesn't look very pretty, trust me. So you've got your star wheels all the way over to the right, your button is flashing, and you're ready to cut. Let's get to cutting. We'll be back. to redesign the whole thing and here we are. So I did a different cut and you can see it's got a little honeycomb feature going on and it still says Anthony. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this from the mat. First thing you want to do is you want to um, remove the tape. You do not want to try to just pull this out because <laughs> it'll rip. Just to be on the safe side, just go ahead and remove the tape. That way you can remove the whole piece of chipboard. <clears throat> and that's what we're going to do. Let's remove all of the tape so that we can remove the whole thing. And you want to make sure when you're doing these, <clears throat> excuse me, that you, um, your image is not bigger than 11 inches. You want to leave at least a half an inch of space on all four sides. And this is why. Because when you tape it, the tape pulls up the chipboard and you don't want to pull up part of your project. That wouldn't be very fun. So you just want to leave a little bit of space around each side and um, 
When I did this one, I made sure to center it on my mat in design space. Also, I will make note that for the record, I did not run this through um, <clears throat> as many times as it said to. It said 24 passes. I'm impatient, um, but I do feel like if I would have let it go a little bit longer, I wouldn't have the issues that I'm going to have with this. You see how some places didn't cut all the way through? So this is going to be kind of fun to pop out. Just want to take it slow. And if you have something like this that it didn't cut all the way through, it's frustrating. Um, but this is still a learning tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my X-Acto knife on the mat and just kind of finish the cut through. I underestimated the thickness of this stuff, man. Whew. Also, keep in mind when you're cutting this stuff that all brands are different, so all brands are going to cut differently, meaning they're not all going to be the same thickness. Do as they say, not as I do. You should not be cutting towards yourself. You should always cut against your body. Alright, there we go. Alright. So I think I definitely should have let it run through like four or five more passes, but I wanted to stop it. One, because I'm impatient, and two, because if you look, cursive letters aren't the greatest for this stuff, apparently. It's peeling up in all the wrong places. That's okay for this one because I plan on um, covering it with paint or vinyl, so not a huge deal. I am honestly not even really going to attempt to pull this out because you can see right here, these are not all the way through. This is what your finished product should look like. And this is what we're going to use. Um, <clears throat> so, a few tips. I learned the lesson so that you don't have to. Make sure you run it through at least half of the passes that it requires. If it says 24, might not need 24, but it at least needs half of them, apparently. If it says 12, do 6. But... This is what happens if you do all of the passes and your material is not as thick as it says. I don't know if you can see it, but no, you can't see it. There you go. See how it's kind of pushed through the entire mat? That's that one. <laughs> so yeah, just play it by ear. Um, and if you do end up waiting for the 24 passes. I'm really sorry because that's 36 hours. Yeah, 36 hours. So adjust your pressure settings um, and I'll try to keep updating the description in this video so that um, it has those pressure settings in there so that you don't have to keep trying it on your own. Just come back to the video. You know, you subscribed anyway, right? So <laughs> you can always just come back. Alrighty people, so um, that is the tutorial on how to cut chipboard, even though mine was a fail. <laughs> Alright, so make sure you subscribe um, so that you can keep updated. I will keep that post updated. I'm going to go back and try to run this through a few more times. Not this one, but another one. Good thing I bought a bulk pack, huh? <laughs> Until next time, my crafty people, we'll see you later.